All right, guys, today we're going to look at synthetic division. <coughs> Yesterday we learned long division, today we're going to learn synthetic division, which is basically like a shorthand for long division. All we're going to do today is we're going to use our coefficients for our given variables. Okay, again, it's got to be in standard form. Okay, just like yesterday, if it's not in standard form, okay, we must make sure that it is in standard form and we must make sure that every term is represented, right? So I need an x squared and then I need an x term and then I need a constant. All right, so synthetic division, shorthand method for dividing polynomials by a linear binomial using only the coefficients. Now, we need the divisor in the form x minus a or x plus a, right? It's got to be a linear divisor, meaning it's got to be an x to the first power. It's got to be a constant here. So I'm saying, can the following be used for synthetic division as they're written? Okay, this is a yes. This has an exponent that is not linear, so this is no. Same thing here, it's a quadratic, that's no, and this is yes, right? So these two are linear divisors, so they can be used. Now, it's in a form x minus a. That's going to be very, very important, x minus a. Because if we look at the following for number one, my divisor is x plus three. All right, so for synthetic division, what we're going to do is we're going to take our constants, and this is in standard form, so we're Gucci. We have all of my descending order exponents represented. So I'm going to take my constant, and I'm going to write them here, 1, 5, and 6. Okay, and I'm going to make a little upside-down house, okay, and then I'm going to put my linear term out here, my constant for my linear term out here. Now, this is in the form x minus a, so if this is in the form x minus a, we had to plug in a negative 3 for a to get x plus 3. So that goes there, minus 3. Okay, so it's, this is a plus sign. We've got to do the opposite of that because it needs to be in the form x minus a. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring the first term down, 1, and we're going to multiply these together. So I've got 1 times negative 3. That gives me a negative 3. Now we're going to add these two. So 5 minus 3 is going to give me 2. Once again, we're going to multiply these right here. So this is going to give me a negative 6. We're going to add these together. That gives me 0. All right, so now I have x squared, so we're going to go one degree down, and this would be one x to the first power, right? So x squared, we're going to go one degree down from that, and that's what's going to be the <coughs> variable raised to that exponent right here. So that's one x squared, I'm sorry, one x to the first power, okay? And then I've got plus two, it's positive two. I have a remainder of zero. Okay, so now do I need to write the 1? Absolutely not. So I've got x plus 2. Now, that should make sense because if I take x plus 3 and x plus 2 and I foil or box them out, I get x squared plus 5x plus 6. So what we just did is we divided this by this factor and we got the other factor of x plus 2. All right, so let's look at another example. Let's look at number 2. Now, again, number 2, my divisor is, again, a positive. So that means that I have a negative 3 for my a value. Make sure that all of my variables are written in descending order and they're all represented. So x to the third, x to the second, x to the first, and a constant. So we're good. So 2, 3, negative 4, and 8. Bring down the first term. We're going to multiply here. So multiply outside of the house. That's going to give me a negative 6. We add inside of the house. So it's going to give me a negative 3. Once again, we're multiplying outside the house. That's a negative 9. We add, that's going to give me a negative 13. Multiply outside the house, that's going to give me a positive 30. Sorry, 29. Holy smokes. 39. 39, sorry. Okay, and I have positive 8 and a positive 39. That's going to give me a positive 47. All right, so now, once again, this is x to the third power, meaning that this is one exponent less. So this is 2x squared minus 3x minus 13. And then here's my remainder. My remainder is a positive 47 over the divisor of x plus 3. All right, let's flip our page. Let's look at number 3. Okay, now number three and number four, it's written in x minus a form. Fantastic. So now our a value is just a positive two. 
All right, let's make sure we have our standard form and where all our exponents are represented. So x to the fourth. We don't have an x to the third, so let's rewrite this as 3x to the fourth plus 0x to the third, and then minus 8x squared plus 2x plus 1. So I need to put that zero term in there for the x cubed, right? So 0 minus 8 plus 2 plus 1. All right, so now we've got it set up. We're Gucci. Bring down the first term, multiply outside of my house, so that's going to give me 6. Add inside my house, that's positive 6. This is positive 12. Add inside my house, that's 4. Multiply outside, that's 8. 20. So I've got a remainder of 21. <laughs> All right, so now again, this is the one exponent or one degree less than this, right? So x to the fourth, this is going to start out x to the third. So 3x cubed, positive 6x squared, plus 4x plus 10 with the remainder of 21 over x minus 2. All right, looking at number 4. Number 4, again, I need to make sure this is in standard form with all of my terms represented, which they're not. So I need a 0x squared term minus 11x plus 10. My divisor is in x minus a, so my a value is positive 5. I've got 2, 0, negative 11, and 10. Let's bring down the first term, multiply outside. Oh man, 59 times 5, 39 times 5. Sorry, I was not prepared for that. 39 times 5, 195. So 205. All right, so again, this is then the one degree less than this. So we're going to start out 2x squared plus 10x plus 39 with a remainder of 205 over x minus 5. All right, let's look at number 5. Number 5 says use synthetic division and find the value of k, which will guarantee that the given binomial is a factor of the polynomial. All right. So let's set up our synthetic division. We have a coefficient of 1, 8, k, and 21. This is a plus 7, right? So my a value is a negative 7. Bring down the first term, 1. That gives me a negative 7. Multiply outside the house. We're adding inside the house. It's going to give me a positive 1. That's going to give me a negative 7. All right, so now I know I need this term, negative 7 plus k. multiplied by negative 7 to get a negative 21 right here because I want to add these together and get a remainder of 0. Okay, so what number do I need to multiply by negative 7 to get negative 21? Well, it's got to be negative 3, right? All right, so I need this, negative 7 plus k, to give me negative 3 here because if I take negative 3 multiplied by negative 7, it's going to give me negative 21. These terms will cancel out remainder of 0. Okay, so what do I need to add to positive, oh, sorry, what do I need to add to negative 7? to get negative 3 right here. Well, the k value's got to be 4. Because if I take 4 and I subtract 7, or add those, combine those together, I get negative 3. Now, I multiply outside the house. That's going to give me a, sorry, negative. Yeah. OK, it's going to give me a positive 21. Coach, that what? Sorry, not 4. I need it to be a positive 3. Okay, because I've got to take negative 7 times 3 and get a negative 21 right here to get a remainder of 0. So k has got to be 10 because 10 minus 7 is going to be a positive 3. All right, now we're Gucci. Negative 7 times 3 is a negative 21, which is a remainder of 0. All right, so my k value is equal to 10. Let's look at number 6. Number 6, I have this as the volume. The height of the rectangular prism is x plus 2. Write an expression that represents the area of the top face of the prism. So area linked times width times the height is the volume, right? So I'm going to take this x cubed plus 2x squared minus 9x minus 18. I'm dividing by a negative 2. Bring down the first term, 1, negative 2, 0, 0, negative 9, positive 18. Perfect. Remainder of 0. Rock on. So this is 1 less than the degree of this. So it's going to be 1x squared plus 0x minus 9. That's the area. Number 7 says determine whether the given binomial is a factor of the polynomial. 
Yes, it is. So let's find the remaining factors. So here we go. X cubed, 10X squared, 32X, 32. We're dividing by a negative 4. Bring down the first term. Negative 4, that's 6. Negative 24, that's positive 8. Negative 32, rock on. Another remainder of 0. So this is starts at x cubed, this starts at x squared, so x squared plus 6x plus 8. Yay!